Scoop Latimer of the Greenville News wrote that you had reminded him you had such, such baseball talent and such a great future in baseball that you reminded him of Shoeless Joe Jackson, which was, at that time was a supreme compliment. And you, you later on became friends with Shoeless Joe? I did. I knew Joe very well. We both grew up in the same community. And that was a great compliment coming from uh, Scoop Latimer. Because uh, Joe Jackson was one of the greatest players that ever played the game of baseball. One day, uh, I was a shy kid, and one day, I decided that I would go meet Joe Jackson. So I went to him, I introduced myself to him, and he said, where are you from, son? I said, I'm from Brandon. And Joe being from Brandon, I assume that says this kid needs some help with his baseball. And he started giving me instructions on hitting, fielding, throwing. You may not know it, but Joe Jackson had one of the greatest throwing arms in baseball. He could throw the ball 396 feet and 8 inches. I saw the trophy, the trophy that he won. And uh, also, one of the greatest hitters you'd ever want to watch. Had a beautiful level swing. I asked him, I said, Joe, what is the most important thing in hitting? He says, keeping your eye on the ball. He says, if you don't see it, you don't hit it, <laughs> which is really true. But Joe and I developed a great relationship, extended, and I played, uh, went into professional baseball myself, played there, and Joe and Katie, his wife, followed me throughout my career. They would come and watch me. Every time I'd go out to West Greenville where his liquor store was and the drug store was next door to him. And that was a meeting place for teenagers. Joe would always see me out, says, how you hitting them? Good buddy, call me good buddy. How you hitting them? So I'd go talk with him and He's always encouraging. Hang in there. Hang in there. If you got a low moment, he'd build it up. And he told me that how he kept his eye on the ball and hitting, that he had a candle. That was back in the days when the mill houses didn't have electricity into the houses. You either had to burn a lamp or a candle. And Joe said he would take that candle and look at it, and it would sharpen his eyes. And uh, he passed that on to me. But I never did try it because I, I didn't, uh, <coughs> didn't have any candles at the time. But, uh, <laughs> but Joe, uh, as I said, we developed a great relationship, and uh, we went on for to 51, 1951, about 10.30 at night, Joe passed away. I got the news the next morning, and uh, as I said, Joe and... Katie and I were real close, and I served as a pallbearer for Joe. He and Katie also. She passed away in 59, and, of course, that was a bad, bad, sad day for me when they passed away. <laughs>